So get this, any time I enter a vehicle, be it as a driver or a passenger, the very first thing I always do is put on my seatbelt. I fully understand the importance of wearing it. One reason is for the simple fact that it is required by law in nearly every state. But perhaps the bigger reason is the fact that I have seen firsthand the potential consequences of not wearing one. This is rooted in the many childhood memories that I have of car accidents. You see, my dad used to work for the Department of Transportation in the county that we lived in. One of his duties was to investigate fatal car accidents. He had a pager, because this was the 90s, and he would get notified whenever a car accident occurred within our county, but only if it involved at least one fatality. Now, during this time, my mom would typically be the one that would take my older sister to go do whatever extracurricular activities she was involved in, whether it was basketball or ballet. This meant that my dad would typically be the one to watch over me and my brother at the house. Usually, this wasn't that big of a deal, because when my brother and I were young, much of our nights would be spent playing with our Hot Wheels cars. But when my dad's pager went off and he was called upon to go work a car accident, guess who had to go with him? That's right. Usually, my brother and I weren't bothered having to go with him to these car accidents, mainly because it wasn't uncommon for my dad to buy his ice cream from Dairy Queen afterwards. Sometimes he'd take us to McDonald's, but their ice cream definitely wasn't as good as Dairy Queen's. My dad would load us up in his work truck, and he always sat both of us in the passenger seat, because the middle seat was occupied by a big computer. Remember, this was the 90s, so small laptops, tablets, and iPads didn't exist back then. We would arrive at these fatal car accident scenes, and there would be a sea of alternating blue and red lights coming from the police cars, the ambulances, and the fire trucks that were all already there. Once my dad parked, he would get out and go to work. This would leave me and my brother inside the truck. And considering that these were fatal car accident scenes, they're not exactly places you would expect to find two young children. People would walk by, seeing me and my brother looking out the window. I always thought it was funny, seeing the confused looks on the faces of police officers, paramedics, and firefighters. Anyways, we saw a lot of crazy things at these car accident scenes. I recall seeing vehicles that had been slammed up against trees, upside down, rolled down into ditches. Heck, there was one time where a car was fully submerged underwater in a retention pond. It had to be fished out with a tow truck line. You would think that seeing stuff like that would be traumatizing for a child. But to be honest, my brother and I had seen them so many times that I'm pretty sure that we eventually just became desensitized to them. However, there was one car accident scene that I remember the most and it involved the driver being ejected from the vehicle. My dad drove up and once again the first responders were asking themselves why two young boys were brought to a fatal car accident scene. My dad got out and started taking photos and recording measurements. He came back to the truck and entered the information into his computer. While he did that, he spoke with a police officer who was standing beside his window. My dad tried to explain to him what he believed had happened, but based on the conversation I overheard between them, this was a two-vehicle accident. My dad concluded that car one was speeding and lost control. Well, as it did that, it collided with the rear end of car two. Car one then veered off the road and struck a telephone pole while still going at a pretty high rate of speed. Since the driver of that car was not wearing his seatbelt, he was ejected through the front windshield upon impact. The driver of car two was uninjured, but just as my dad was about to tell the officer the fate of the driver that was ejected, he stepped out of the truck, which prevented my brother and I from hearing him. At that moment, a female paramedic saw me and my brother. She apparently had a soft spot for children, because she thought we were the cutest boys ever. She ran to her ambulance and came back to bring us both lollipops. All the while, the other members of her crew could be seen behind her dealing with the driver that had been ejected. There was a glass shard that had impaled his chest and blood was pouring out everywhere. You know, 
kid-friendly stuff. While we were waiting on the tow trucks to arrive, my dad put me and my brother in the bed of his truck so we wouldn't be cooped up in that passenger seat. Our curious eyes peered over the edge. Lo and behold, the black bag of death. That image has stayed in my mind ever since, and that is why I am OCD whenever I enter a vehicle. So, after watching this video, I think we can all agree the moral of the story is make sure you get your ice cream from Dairy Queen.